guys, it's Todd from Like Minded Lunatics and Mark from Like Minded Lunatics bringing you, yeah, it's another drink place where, hey, it's all we do around here. I mean, besides obsessing over our favorite movies and our favorite fight scenes within those movies, it's all we care to do round here welcome back to the channel welcome back to drink place swear and welcome back to like my lunatics you know that like my lunatics is not just me here at drink place swear no it's also my buddy mark who's here today how you doing bro i'm great dude i'm so excited to do this glad you're here and folks who don't know his stuff please check out bang the friday night videos just the best stuff on the channel as far as i'm concerned so please watch those if you're not and bang i don't know if my finger's in the right place that's what she said bang please hit subscribe if you haven't done so already uh so we can see how big this family of like-minded weirdos degenerates runaways and 'er ne'er-do-wells is getting gets bigger every day and we're glad you're here all right. What is it we do here at Drink Place Where, Mark? Well, it's exactly what it sounds like, right? We drink, we play, and uh, when I'm here, we curse a lot. That's right. So what are we playing here today? We are playing Super Smash Brothers Ultimate Edition on the Switch, and uh, we'll get into the game in a minute. What are you drinking today, bro? I got, I got, a, I got a, a crisp gin and tonic. Ooh, gin and tonic. And I'm doing, I mean, you know, it's no big surprise. I'm doing a Jim Beam and Coke. Friends, get yourself something, kick back with us, and watch us suck at a really fun video game. Mm. I like that you did clarify that we are going to suck. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You, you said you haven't played this game in about five years, and I bought this game last night. So, okay, so yeah. let's make it an agreement right now. Nobody cares about how bad we play. That's right. All right, so uh, Mark, you've got the control board there. Could you share your screen and uh, let's get to playing? That's fine. All right, you we're ready? good to go. Let's do All it. Right. Yes. Let's kick each other's ass a little bit, and then we'll get into the story. I just killed myself. Excellent. So I win as long as I don't fuck it that up. That was a good choice. I didn't feel like fighting. I thought self-sacrifice was the better option. So you're Ken. So I killed I myself have, yet again, Todd. So I have not unlocked very many characters in this game. Yeah. Um, so talk to me just real quick about this game. Who are some of your favorite characters to play as? Because I only have a handful. I actually, I like little Mac. He's oh, yeah. super, he's pretty strong, but he, if I remember right, and again, it has been a while since I've played it. If I remember right, he's not as agile as some of them, but he's pretty strong. Okay. Well, so I like him because of his strength and because it's Little Mac. And it's I've Little killed Mac. myself yet again, Todd. Excellent. This is voting very well for me. All right. I want to get into the story today while we play. Let's do it. Oh, my God. Except I'm really excited about how I'm kicking your ass just in this moment. I know. Um, because in real life, I never would be able to. This is why video game nerds exist. I don't know if that's true, Todd. I do. Wait, wait, what's happening with the Galaga thing up here? I have to be a part of this. Okay, let's talk about uh, why we're here today. I want to talk about favorite fight scenes. Specifically, oh yeah, look at that. Favorite fight scenes in film. Okay. Okay. Um, because I think, uh, well, you and I both love uh, film quite a bit, and oh, uh, yes. we, we also grew up in the '80s and '90s watching some of the most, like, uh, I don't know, like macho films that maybe ever were produced. Yes. Uh, do you have f favorite fight scenes from films that jump out for you? Just Oh, as gosh, it's so hard. I, You know, we talked about, obviously, Fight Club is probably... it. I think for me it mixes... It's a perfect balance of realism and then unrealism. I, I like that. Um, uh -oh. that they, they found a really good balance. So I always like those fights in Fight Club. And I also enjoy watching Jared Leto get beat to mincemeat. Uh, so we are like-minded both in our, our dislike for Jared Leto. I cannot stand the man. I, I don't know why. I, I just don't like anything about him. So uh, female friends of mine would say that I don't like him because he's cute. I don't think no, that's the reason. I think it's no, because he's the worst Joker of all time. A horrendous Joker. Yeah. Uh, Captain Falcon. Being cute has nothing to, that doesn't play into it at all. I like a lot of cute guys and I'm not ashamed to admit it. Again, in Fight Club, Brad Pitt is a, a very striking man in that film. Agreed. Uh, so it has nothing to do with the attractiveness of the man. It has okay. to do with the fact that he he acts like he is from another planet and we should all be worshiping him. I don't care for it. Right. Okay. Uh, 
while while we're off camera here, you can uh, change your fighter if you want to. I'm going to do so. Okay. And I'm going to name probably a, few, a good idea. And I'm going to name a few of my favorite uh, films, uh, fight scenes from films. Uh, one of mine, and this is one of yours as well, is uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Oh, uh, right? so good. When Harrison Ford is uh, standing there and uh, this uh, big old dude with a sword comes and uh, he's really showing off about his sword play skills. And uh, then Harrison Ford just shoots the dude. Now, I know. You, you have a story about the filming of that scene. Is that right? Yeah, so it's pr it's pretty well known, but apparently that was not what was supposed to happen. They had a whole fight choreographed for that, a whole thing where Harrison Ford was supposed to uh, to fight the guy. And Harrison Ford had dysentery. I can't remember exactly where they were shooting it. Had dysentery and really just felt terrible. And uh, so instead, he just pulls out the gun and shoots him. And that's not the take that's in the movie, apparently. But they immediately afterwards pivoted and was like, yeah, that's just the better. That's the better route to go. And uh, so, yeah, they changed it. I love that because I'm sure that there was a, a really, uh, you know, uh, like uh, uh, well put together choreography for a fight scene that was going to happen with these guys. And uh, in the end, it was better that they just, uh, you know, that, that dude gets shot <laughs> in the belly. Um, my favorite fight scene of all time, and I hope you'll pull up the clip for folks here in a minute Yeah, before we get started, is uh, Paul Newman in Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Uh, to set the clip up for folks, it's when, uh, and we can get started kicking each other's ass, uh, but it's when um, Butch and Sundance get back to their gang and uh, the gang has been waiting for them for a long time and has decided that they're going to let somebody else run the gang. And uh, th there's a, uh, a dude, his name is, uh, let me see if I, Logan. Logan uh, wants to challenge Butch. And so they get into a knife fight. It's one of the great scenes in film. 1969's Butch Cassie and the Sundance Kid. Uh, let's check that out for a second. No, no, not yet. Not until me and Harvey get the rules straightened out. Rules? In a knife fight? No rules. What? Well, if there ain't gonna be any rules, let's get the fight started. Someone count one, two, three, go. One, two, three, go. I was really rooting for you, Butch. <laughs> well, thank you, flat nose. That's what sustained me in my time of trouble. I feel like that clip is better than this game, Todd. <laughs> But, you know, I think Butch Cassidy's and Paul Newman's performance was a precursor to our 80s heroes, even though he's a this is a, a film from 1969. He, you know, he's this um, he's this guy who refuses to be like put down. He, he's, he refuses to be told no. Uh, he's right. a lot like a Venkman. You know, he just says, like, OK, maybe I'm not as big as you as or as strong as you, but I'm definitely going to get what I want here. Man, and you were smoking me with this fire sword, by the way. And it's the cynicism too, like the the and the the scoundrel aspect. Because I feel like as early as that was, like in the '60s, your yeah. your 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 heroes still had to be kind of like uh, the white knight, the guy in the white hat. Right. You know, in the '70s, you get like the peck and paw films and stuff like that. But this was still kind of like the white knight stuff, and uh, I like that. That it's transition. A yeah cowboy transition yeah um another okay now you told me there was definitely a clip you wanted to show folks from your favorite fight scene and this is not from film but it's from television can you set this clip up are you talking about the sunny one <laughs> yes this is when uh mac and d are trying to impress their new rich friends and to do so uh they're fighting each other and that's all you need to know all right let's check this out <laughs> There's nothing better than watching people punch each other in the crotches. <laughs> yeah, and you know, it's kind of bold uh, for television, you know, like uh, a dude getting kicked in the junk or punched in the junk is not all that controversial, but a lady getting punched in the junk, that you, Mac, don't, see that. you don't see that every day. Mac full-on uppercuts D's vagina. 
just a full uppercut right into the old. Oh man, you China. kicked my ass, and I love a little Mac. And look, even the the uh, the guy, the trainer's back there. What's his name? Do you even know? I don't remember. Nah, me neither. And, and I love that game. Yeah, that's. I great. love Link is clapping for me. He's very happy about yeah, how badly that, I pummeled here, I'll, I'll do it for you because you won. Oh, thank you. Uh, all right, let's fire off some more. Oh, okay. Uh, while we get ready for one more, I'm going to change characters again. While yeah, I'll talking. do the same. Um, another one that uh, I love, uh, it, it has to be from Star Wars. Oh, uh, yeah. But, but I need your help picking a best Star Wars. Because, of course, you have, well, even though uh, our generation does not love uh, the prequel uh, trilogy. Uh, Darth Maul is kick-ass. So he's got the dual-sided lightsaber, and, and that's an exciting thing to watch. Yeah. Um, and, uh, of course, in uh, episode four, when uh, Obi-Wan literally disappears and decides to go into the afterlife without being uh, taken down, that's an epic moment. But uh, do you have a favorite Star Wars fight scene? I've got a number of them. And here's the thing with fight scenes that I think is difficult when you're talking about best ones. Are we talking about the best choreography or the best fight in that how it affects character or narrative? Because I think Ooh. those are two really different things. And Star Wars, I think, at its best, really balances those well. So I think one of the best examples, obviously, is in Return of the Jedi when Luke and Vader are fighting. There's so much interplay between emotion and stuff there. That's a wonderful fight scene. Choreography is not as good as some of the other stuff, but the emotion's there. <clears throat> then obviously with Duel of the Fates and Phantom Menace, boy, that's a good fight with Darth Maul. Um, right. But I think for me, there are two that really stand out, and it's two that I know you have not seen. Um, so at the end of Clone Wars, Ahsoka fights Darth Maul. Yes, and I've never seen Clone Wars. And when they filmed that, Dave Filoni wanted to make sure that Maul acted like he did in Phantom Menace. So they mocap Ray Stevens or um, Ray Park. They mocap Ray Park actually doing the fight. Really? So all of the moves that he uses, like with the moment you see Maul start moving, you're like, holy shit, that is that is Maul. Um, but the emotion of it is fantastic, too, because Ahsoka is all by herself. She's been abandoned at this point. And uh, Maul thinks he's getting Obi-Wan. And Ahsoka, he, it's revealed it's Ahsoka. And his line, I'll play it right here. I was hoping for Kenobi. Why are you here? And that well, fight. I have to great. see it because if it's your favorite, I mean, out of all of the Star Wars fight scenes, I, I have to see it. It's phenomenal. And then there's one other in Rebels, and it's where Maul finally does meet his end. And it's Obi-Wan on Tatooine guarding Luke. Oh, wow. And Maul finds out about Luke, and he goes to kill him. And Obi-Wan meets him in the desert. And this is the... This is the old Obi-Wan. They right. even They even draw him like Alec Guinness. And there's a thing that he does, and I'll play, maybe I'll play the clip, or people who've seen it will know. When he's, when the fight starts off, Maul unleashes the dual-sided saber just like he did in Phantom Menace, and he does the thing. Yeah. And Obi-Wan is acting really placid. He unleashes his saber, and he does this thing first, where he puts yeah. his hand up and he does that. Right. Over the head. The cocky Obi-Wan, the, the child Obi-Wan. Right. And then he takes the saber and he pulls it into the samurai set up like this, like Qui-Gon Jinn. And what you don't realize is that he's baiting Maul mm. because the way that Maul killed Qui-Gon is Qui-Gon's doing this. Maul acts like he's going to hit him and then he fakes into a, a lunge. Right. Obi-Wan baits him. The moment that Darth Maul comes up with the fake, there's one slash, and Obi-Wan comes straight down. Wow. And he fucking kills him. 
You make and a it, good point, man, that like uh, in, in a lot of uh, action movies or in a lot of, of movies that have fight scenes where where a, a, an epic fight is meant to be built in, a lot of it is just for entertainment. But in Star Wars, it is always meant to be a transition of power or an emotional change in a character. The result is higher than just somebody got their ass kicked or yeah. somebody died. It's like a, the, even the living character goes through something emotionally. Yes. And that's yeah. something I, I really like about those fights. And that's why I said, does it have to do with the, how well it was choreographed? Because obviously something like a John Wick or something like that is going to take the cake. Sure. But when it's about conveying either character or narrative arc, that fight with Obi-Wan and Darth Maul, there are literally, I think, four moves in it. I've counted them. Wow. There's literally like four moves. But, but it's it, all emotion. It's imbued with emotion. Oh my God. And yeah, that's a good point. And John Wick is a great, like, uh, you know, uh, thing to compare it with there is that John Wick is heavily organized in terms and choreographed in terms of the fight scene. And there is emotional depth to what he's doing because he's always, of course, trying to take revenge or uh, stay alive uh, to fight the whatever this uh, structure that's uh, against him. Right. But, uh, but with star Wars, it is like um, the, the characters fighting uh, their very lives depend on it, but also the, the, them holding themselves together emotionally is dependent on this fight. All right, let's get going one more. Yeah, uh, let's do one more. Let's do one more. You got a, you got another character. I'm not doing it. See, I got I got to talking about the Star Wars, and uh, then I abandoned the game. I got talking about the Star Wars. All right, I'm going to quick fire a couple. We don't need clips for. Okay. Um, but, um, I mean, uh, Rocky, if you're talking about uh, this topic, you've got to talk about Rocky. Uh, the big debate is between Rocky 1 or 2. Which one is the best? I'm going to go the end of Rocky 1 just because it's the classic film um if we're talking blood sport with jean-claude van damme as one of my favorite like fighting centric movies that i now recognize as an adult is bad yeah. um but great uh, his fight with chong lee is uh, amazing um can i say something here todd sure sure i feel like that the jean-claude van damme fight scenes are to fight scenes what 90s porn was to sex. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, no, go on. Like, as kids, we watch those porns, we're like, oh, this is what sex is. It is not. Uh, it's not even good sex. It's, it's like, it's like uh, uh, the WWF of sex. Uh, and I right. feel like that his fights are the same way to fighting. Like, it's all flash and yeah. that type of stuff. And, uh, they're fun to watch, you know, but I don't know. He I see what you mean. Uh, but perhaps I, I'm I'm concerned for you because perhaps what I'm hearing also is that like never mind. That like <laughs> never mind. No, that, continue the thought. You can't start a thought and not continue it. And say never mind. All right. Yeah. Well, like if if your uh bedroom experience is not exciting, you're doing it wrong. That's all I'm saying. No, no, I'm oh, not you saying you smoked me. I'm not saying that sex isn't supposed to be exciting. I'm just saying that it's not supposed to be filmed with like Vaseline over the camera <laughs> lens. And uh, it's not, it doesn't have a, a soundtrack by an Eddie Van Halen ripoff. Oh yeah. Well, that's true. Good point. Um, all right. Uh, we also have to talk about Princess Bride. We haven't talked yes. about Princess Bride yet. I am not left-handed. Although Mark, you know that I am left-handed. You are left-handed. Yeah. Uh, it's such a great fight. And again, it conveys a lot. Although I will say, after having, you know, as a big fan of that actual novel, I think Goldman's novel does a better job than the film. Well, that's what everyone says. I haven't read the book, but that's what everyone says, that it's a it's a fantastic book. So there's a there's a big chapter on Inigo and all the training he went through so he could kill the six fingered man. Yeah. And then he couldn't find him. And so he essentially turns into a drunk and right. he'd never, he hadn't had any challenges. And he went into the fight thinking it was gonna be a no challenge fight. 
And by the end of it, he's realizing he's losing. And it's and he realizes that he's losing because he's been a drunk. It's great. Like that the whole fight and the fun part is there, but you also get Inigo's internal, all of this has been for nothing because I was a drunk. Right. Man, that's good. intense. It was good. All right. Uh we got 18 seconds left here as we wrap up. Uh any final ones you want to throw out? Oh gosh. It was fun watching Neo finally come into his own and beat Smith, wasn't it? Yes, it was. I honestly like the first film the best, but the end of the third film is my favorite moment uh, yeah. in the trilogy, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, that was great. And then uh, also, um, we haven't talked about Big Trouble in Little China. Uh, <laughs> which it's all in the reflexes. <laughs> one of your favorite films. Uh, great fight scene uh, in that. Lots of good fight scenes in that. Um, okay, man, I think we should wrap up. Uh, folks have probably had just about enough of us playing poorly and uh, talking bullshit. But, uh, dude, thanks for coming on Drink, Play, Swear with me here and just kicking great. back and playing a game that, I, frankly, I stink at. Yeah, I'm but, not great uh, at it either. I was going to say, but that's me with all the games. So, uh, all right, man, uh, let's wrap up these beverages. And, folks, in between now and the next time we talk to you, we're Mark and Todd. See you. <laughs>